Hello and welcome to Red Live and I hope everybody who is watching this is having an awesome day. Me, I'm doing good man, no complaints whatsoever. Now I do have some red hot news for you today and our first topic of the video, Mini Lamini's looks trolled again on Twitter. I almost said Mini Lamini Jones over there for a second. But yeah, media personality and actress Mini Lamini's looks continue to be under the scrutiny as more Twitter users continue to criticize her. Now photographed during her movie premiere, The Honeymoon, Mini Lamini's look came under fire as Twitter users felt as though she was... Uh, uh, underwhelming. I think, yeah, that is as polite as I can put it. But yeah, needless to say, Mini Lamini continues to be under Twitter's wrath where her looks are concerned. Now, right off the get-go, I'm going to say this. For me personally, Mini Lamini still looks great. I'm not really going to do comparisons as to how she looks from 20 years ago to how she looks now. But yeah, getting back to the story at hand, recently after posting her beautiful pictures on Twitter, the honeymoon actress was received by a very tough crowd who yet again attacked her looks with no mercy. Now in the past, Mini Lamini's body has been body shamed, especially, you know, since her public divorce with ex-husband Quentin Jones. It seems like people are now coming through and saying how they feel about Mini Lamini. But yeah, a user on social media posted the following picture of Mini Lamini and captioned it, Ladies and gentlemen, Mini Lamini with some heart emojis over there. I'm assuming that this particular user likes what he sees over there. I mean, this heart emojis. But of course, Twitter being Twitter, users came through on the comment section and one user wrote, I know I can't tell my younger self that this is the Han I crushed on back when she would say, Hi, my name is Mini Lamini in Tombi, Yom Zulu. She gave me chills. Now one would assume that uh, when he sees Mini Lamini now, the chills are no longer there. And fellas, we all love a good old fashioned chill. Another user wrote, Mother Nature gave her beauty and youth, now Father Time is busy taking it all away. Look, like I said, you know, personally, I still think that Mini Lamini looks great. Do get in the comment section uh, down below. Obviously, Red Live YouTube channel comment sections seem to be more civilized than Twitter itself. But yeah, I mean, do get in the comment section down below and let me know what do you guys think about Mini in this particular look, in this particular image. Because if this user has anything to go by, he wrote how the mighty have fallen with a whole bunch of crying emojis. Yeah, ne have the mighty fallen, ladies and gentlemen. Our next topic and sticking with Mini Lamini as she opens up about her divorce. So yes, Mini Lamini has opened up about the ending of her marriage. Now in early 2022, the media personality revealed that she and her husband, Quentin Jones, have filed for divorce. While social media had speculated as to what led to the split, she remained mum. I will say this, a lot of the speculation, especially on social media, Twitter, was that Mini Lamini was having an affair with Edwin Sodi. But looking at more recent times, she was actually interviewed on 702. Now, Mini said that although she never envisioned being separated from her husband, getting into the marriage she hadn't known herself. Minnie is quoted as saying the following, I never imagined getting divorced. I always thought I would raise my kids the same way I was raised. I just felt like for me, timing was off. I felt like I didn't know myself. Furthermore, I went on to further lose myself in the marriage. Hey, if the rumors and speculations are anything to go by, of course you'd lose yourself when you are jetting off in other people's private jets, right? But moving right along, the codes go on to read, I think the failure part is on my part, from not being able to pick up what was right for me at the time before I went all the way. You know, in relationships, you always know. When you look back, you're like, that was a red flag and that was a red flag. You're a red flag. I'm not pushing the blame in any way shape or form but you either a red flag or not acknowledging it or they have red flags and you're not acknowledging it look i will say this this particular statement has me confused who is the red flag here eh? who is she the red flag is is he the red flag is is the flag the red flag 
Heck, at this point, I'm even thinking that marriage might just be the red flag. But nonetheless, Minnie went on to say that the ending of her marriage felt like she was getting a second chance at life. That is good to hear. But she would always cherish their union as it had brought her a son who is now two years old. Now, the mother of Juan's private matters have trended on social media, of course, and they are trending right now. And she has definitely made headlines. And apparently, some of those trends and headlines are even costing her jobs job opportunities but Mini Lamini says that she has remained on top of her game. She goes on to say, I won't lie, I've lost a lot of business as a result of people making up stories about me. People need to be a lot more cognizant that their words have power and you can destroy livelihoods and homes on statements that aren't true. Now this particular statement comes from an interview that she did on KFM. And despite all the social media speculations, Minnie went on from launching a luxurious luxury bar lounge, the mansion in Centurion in September of last year, to becoming a producer and getting back into the acting space. So definitely congratulations to Minnie Lamini on her accomplishments and may she continue to flourish. Divorce red flags is not the end, but red live is definitely the plug. Our next topic, Mfundi Vundla, comes under fire for the return of Connie Ferguson and Rapulana Siepemo. Generations The Legacy creator Mfundi Vundla comes under fire following the news that TV power couple actress Connie Ferguson and Rapulana Siepemo are returning to the SAPC hit show Generations The Legacy. Now, won't lie, it does seem that a lot of viewers and fans on social media have mixed reactions. Personally, I will say this, the particular news of the two actors coming back to Generations, the legacy, oh, it's not all that shocking for me. I mean, they've been going, coming back numerous times. I believe that this is the fourth time that Connie Ferguson will be returning to Generations, the legacy. Well, Generations, I mean, she returned three times to Generations when it was just Generations, and this will be the first time she is returning to Generations, the legacy. But at the end of the day, it's all Generations. Now, entertainment commentator Phil Mpela reported on the news he posted the following on social media. Casting news, Connie Ferguson and Rapulana Siapemo return to Generations. The pair will reprise their roles as Garabo and Tao in the SAPC One Soapy for few episodes as guest stars. Tao and Garabo return to Generations The Legacy in April. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, next month we will be seeing Tao and Garabo returning to Generations The Legacy. And there's also a statement from the SAPC that reads as follows. Generations The Legacy is proud to welcome two beloved guest performers in the month of April. Viewers will no doubt be delighted by the appearance of Garabo Roca, played by Connie Ferguson, and Tao Mohale, played by Rapulane Siapemo, who will grace our screens once more in their historic roles. Viewers can expect all the class, charm, and poise that the two have brought to the roles of Tao and Garabo. It promises to be an epic month with the drama of the show demanding the intervention of two important characters. As part of the larger generations, the Legacy family, we can assure viewers that this is by no means the last or the least that we will see the two. So stay tuned, catch up, and be prepared for a very special month ahead. Look, like I mentioned earlier, considering the number of times that the two have come back and reprised their roles on Generations, I definitely believe that this will not be the last time that they appear on the soapy. But yeah, however, it does seem that not everyone is actually jumping for joy that Ferguson and uh, Sia Pemo are returning to the show as a lot of viewers and users on social media have lashed out at the creator Mvundi Vundla for sleeping, I quote, on talent that Mzansi has to offer. So basically, they believe that he is recycling actors and actresses for the purpose of ratings. So taking a look at some of the reactions on social media, one user wrote Mfundi Vundla using Corny Ferguson and Rapulana to save that lame ass show with some crying emojis. Now, according to the ratings, and I did see Phil Mpela actually writing, commenting about this, that uh, apparently the ratings for generations are at an all time low. I think uh, it's even being surpassed by an ETV show scandal. 
Now another user actually came through and replied and wrote, truth is generation died when everyone was fired, talking about that mass firing and rebooting or like a soft reboot when it was originally generations and then went to generations, the legacy. Now another user came through and replied and wrote, they should put an end to this. To which the user replied and wrote, Mfundi Vundla killed his own project and now we have to suffer the consequences. Maybe they could pitch a different with the current staff. Pitch a different white. I mean, the comment was getting good and then it just cut off randomly over there. But yeah, I mean, do get in the comment section down below and let me know what you guys think about uh, the news that uh, Karabo and Dao are returning to SAPC Soapy Generations, the legacy. Are you up in arms, uh, feeling livid or are you celebrating, rejoicing? Our next topic, at least three suspects in AKA shooting reportedly arrested in Cape Town. It has been over six weeks since the shocking murders of rapper Keenan Forbes, aka and Tibelo Motsuane, aka Tibbs, outside Durban restaurant Wish on Florida Road. Now, one thing that the police seemingly to have done is confirm that it was an assassination, and they have been investigating ever since. Now, with the Megacy growing weary of the slow pace in which they feel that the investigation is going, we even talked about it. The Megacy actually wrote President Sir Ramaphosa a letter demanding justice for aka but yeah according to the latest reports and news coming from iol article the durban police made a breakthrough yesterday and at least three suspects have been arrested in connection with the murder of aka and tibbs now the publication reports that the police were monitoring suspects from last week a source close to the investigation told them that the suspects were arrested in cape town and are currently in police custody now this is coming directly from IOL and they still got the article up there they are sticking to their guns however according to the reports a Cape Town police spokesperson was contacted and he reportedly referred them to the KwaZulu Natal police station the Cape Town police spokesperson is quoted as saying the following it is a KZN case should we get any information it will be sent to them you should contact them for information now the publication goes on to say that they did indeed get a hold of KZN police Lee spokesperson who did not confirm any arrest regarding the aka case this is the quote from the kzn police spokesperson we have not received any update on the aka case so after this we got a whole bunch of other publications saying that the kzn police dismiss aka murder arrest so at this point i'm such here wondering Uguti, where is this who is this iol source because you know this is why i call sources snitches because for me it seems like this particular source or snitch from iol IOL might have been on Twitter you know this is some news that you'd expect from Twitter you know where they claim that they have a source but then it turns out that that source is wrong so yeah I'm confused I mean who is the source number one obviously they won't name the source it might as well be tomato source but yeah IOL came out with the article and like I said it's still there on their website they haven't retracted it or deleted it they are saying that KZN police have made arrests however the police spokesperson are saying that Mm -mm, there's no arrest they are dismissing this particular news so i don't know who to believe do we believe the snitch do we believe the cops now some people will say that when it comes to cops in south africa it's better to believe the snitch than the cops and lo and behold as i am editing this video a new report from iol has come out this one reads how cops closed in on aka's alleged killers now i'm going to read this article for you guys now as you can see in the picture it does look like there are some people who are arrested now i don't know who or how many they are but uh, the faces have been blurred but it does look like uh, there's more than one person arrested over there now the article goes on to read police have apprehended three men in connection with the murder of keenan aka forbes the suspects have been taken in for interrogation at this stage so like i said who do we believe do we believe iol and they snitches and i suppose this particular picture which could be a picture of anyone and any time in time it could be an old picture 
But yeah, apparently the trio were apprehended in Balher in the Western Cape at the weekend. And according to reports, investigation teams had been trailing the alleged hitman for weeks following the murders of AKA and Tibelo Tibbs Motowane in Durban on Friday, February the 10th. The two had been gunned down on Florida Road after AKA had been to Wish Restaurant for food and drinks ahead of a scheduled birthday celebration performance at Hugo, a Durban nightclub. Saps, detectives and members of National Intervention Unit closed in on the three suspects at the Erika Square in Balher on Sunday. So right now the article is kind of elaborating a little bit more. It does seem that the news that's coming out, the, the snitch, the source is coming out with a little bit more information. The article goes on to read one of the suspects is linked to a string of taxi killings in Mpangeni in northern KwaZulu-Natal according to Network 24. The men were traced to the Western Cape following a string of crimes in KZN where they allegedly posed as officials from the Department of Social Development sources yes those tomato sources those snitches close to the investigation said the men would go house to house posing as sasa agents and offering to help people register for grants and there are more pictures with more blurred faces the article goes on to read the police's investigation led them to Balher where they observed the gang's movement before apprehending them. Officers also found a white Mercedes Benz believed to have been used as a getaway car on the night of AKA's murder. This is very interesting over there because this is a piece of evidence that can link these particular suspects to the actual murder of AKA. I mean, at the end of the day, we have been talking about how there is CCTV footage of the actual suspects and them fleeing on a car and on foot. So if that can be used and linked, definitely a win for the police over there. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, IOL are sticking to their guns and they are maintaining that the cops have definitely arrested AKA's alleged killers. They've got suspects in custody. And like I said earlier, the police spokesperson, according to the quotes and the reports, well, they did dismissed that they had any suspects arrested and in custody. I will say this, perhaps the spokesperson needs to start reading IOL or watching Red Live as well. I mean, that could also help. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, do get in the comment section down below and let me know what you guys think about that report from IOL that goes on to say that the cops have arrested three suspects in connection with AKA's assassination. Definitely justice for AKA. Justice must be served. And just like that, we have reached the end of the news. Now, if you did enjoy the video, please do me a huge favor. Share it with your family, your friends, and your enemies. Confuse the hell out of everybody. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Red Live if you haven't. And binge watch my previous videos.